Hello and welcome to WASH Talks, organized as part of the steering committee of the Water Supply and Sanitation Collaborative Council. My name is Eileen Palmer and today we're interviewing WSSCC members and exper um, experts in the field. I'm pleased to have with me uh, our steering committee representative from Small Island Developing States, uh, Adriana Thomas and Simon Wascoka, a colleague of mine. Adriana, I'd like to ask you some questions. You've been with the WSSCC family for many years now. Um, can you talk a bit about uh, our convenient, convening role and why it has been so important? Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me on the program. Um, WSSCC has played a leading role in convening over the years. As a matter of fact, WSSCC has grown with the, with the sanitation sector. As the sector evolved, WSSCC was very much integrated into that evolution. And, um, was one, and it also was one of the leaders in the evolution of the sanitation sector. I think what the sanitation sector is today, um, uh, uh, much of that is owed to the work of WSSCC over the past 29 years. So um, I do believe that it has sort of developed a strength in, in convening, and that strength should be built on. And I think if we were to say one line as it relates to WSSCC and convening, I would say that WSSCC is a strong leader in convening in the sanitation sector. Excellent, excellent. And based on your experience, can you share your thoughts on how working in partnerships and with partners, we can elevate the voices of those left behind? Partnerships add value. And so WSSCC brings an added value. And I think WSSCC over the years was very clear in terms of what is the added value that it brings to the partnership. And, uh, but nevertheless, I think as the sector is changing, the external environment is changing, then internally the organization also um, is changing. But definitely as it relates to the added value, I think it was clear the added value was strong in networking, strong in building partnerships, strong at the um, working at the community level. We've also um, worked in other areas, for example, in terms of coordinating at the level of government and institutions, and we've also done well in those areas too. So I think that, um, but it's also the um, one partner um, cannot, or one organization cannot really achieve the goals and the objectives. So it's very, very important that um, WSSCC work with um, other organizations, it has been doing that, to continue to do that, because they also bring an added value. And in the sanitation sector, many of the um, partners in the sanitation sector, many of the players, I should say, are also very clear in terms of what they bring to the table. So I do believe that, um, like I s said, partnerships add value. And if we can bring the right um, partners together and with their added value, there's definitely no limit to what could be achieved as it relates to the SDG goal two, goal six, sorry. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And as you know, next Tuesday, we are celebrating World Toilet Day. Um, this year's theme is to leave no one behind, toilets for all. What kind of message would you like to send out to our Facebook group here for this day? I would say build resilience. Build a resilient uh, sanitation sector or sanitation and hygiene sector, I would say. So I think that even as, um, as we work in the sector, let's focus on building resilience, not just um, sustainability, but also equity. And uh, also to, to develop the sector. But how do we also ensure that the elements are there to sustain the growth and development in the sector? And this is where I think that a lot of focus, or more focus rather, should be placed on institutions. Because really to sustain the sector, um, we need strong communities, we need strong individuals, but we need strong organizations, but also we need strong institutions. Uh, also, the involvement of, of governments. Governments play a very, very key role as it relates to building resilience and sustainability. The private sector also. I think we're still learning how to work with the private tech sector in, the, um, in, in sanitation. And I think it's to explore more, um, one, the opportunities, but also the ways of working. Great. Thank you very much. 
Simon Musukwa, you're with the East and Africa unit with WSSCC. And uh, in September, WSSCC organized a workshop in Dar es Salaam. Can you tell us about the workshop? Well, thank you for inviting me to the talk. The workshop was basically to provide a platform to our colleagues in the region on accelerating what it means to do equality and discrimination and principles of leaving no one behind from the global sustainable development goals discussion to the practicalities on the community. So linking the global to the people that we might be leaving behind if we don't do sanitation and hygiene the way we're supposed to do it. Right. And at, at that workshop, you had over 30 participants from nine countries, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Kenya, Malawi, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, of course, Tanzania and Uganda. And how is it, how, why is it important to bring these partners together to support national uh, work? Uh, we are a collaborative council and we believe in collaboration and we believe in providing space for people to discuss. So we were basically a convener to bring all those people, learn from them in terms of what it means in their individual uh, countries to leave no one behind. So uh, demystifying what it means to talk about leaving no one behind. So it was quite important to hear from them and to learn from them and to share experiences on how they want to do practical work in accelerating reach to those people that would be uh, left behind. Right, right. And two partner organizations that were at this workshop, the Sanitation and Water for All and the World Health Organization. What was their role and how do you see the, these two organizations playing out at the national level? The basis of uh, what has not been done is normally well articulated in some global documents like the Joint Monitoring Program, uh, glass and the new talk of uh, e other elements like track film where you are saying what is it that so far we see as a gap having partners who work at global level to articulate what is happening at national level uh, helps to link uh, in practical terms who is it that is left behind so this platform that was uh, uh, organized to have uh, the sanitation and water for all partner WHO was basically articulating to say, okay, as global partners, we have agreed on particular values of working together around collaborative behaviors, sector building blocks, and how does that play at country level? Mm -hmm. So that was the whole purpose of, mm -hmm. of bringing that group. And at the same time, we're saying, if we have wrong data, we have wrong targets. And we are not talking about numbers, we are talking about human beings. Yes. So this platform was to say, how do we identify those human beings who are later on counted and you have them as figures? We are saying, how do you link these figures to human beings? What processes, what systems do we need to put in place? What do we need, who needs to do what? Yeah. And we know that uh, under the frameworks of the uh, sanitation and water for all, we have governments in the lead, but we have private sector, we have civil society, we have communities themselves, how do each of these play an important role in terms of uh, being accountable for what resources come on the table and how those resources are utilized to reach the rights holders. Mm -hmm. We as duty bearers have to articulate what is it that we have and what we bring on the table to reach out to the community. So that was basically the reason we had this partnership and this meeting. Right. Yes. And uh, one more question for you about that is, um, Leave no one behind in equality and non-discrimination equality and non-discrimination is part of WSCC's DNA. And can you give us some highlights of, of how this was tackled? Um, when we were at, we are talking about closing the gap. We are talking about uh, uh, having moved from the Millennium Development Goals, which said, "Can you please accelerate delivery to make sure you reduce by half particular targets like for water sanitation and hygiene." we did good work but as you are rushing towards that reduction in terms of who is not saved the likelihood of missing so many people is high and now we were saying how can we identify first of all those people that we would have reached last and then start from there if you have a mango tree and you're trying to pluck the fruits that are there 
who are saying, let's not start with the ones that are lower. Let's start with the one that would eat the last, which is the toughest. So this uh, idea of saying, can we articulate, can we uh, identify the groups or the individuals that would ordinarily be left out? Are they the ones that are geographically very remote? Are they the urban poor? Are they the special interest groups, the physically challenged, would it be the visually impaired? How are we addressing these particular groups? And again, we are no longer talking about watch sector. We are saying let's be multi-sectoral because we've talked enough to fellow WASH uh, practitioners. Can we bring others who are also dealing with these groups, special interest groups, on board and have a dialogue with them and identify how do they intend to be part of this holistic approach of leaving no one behind? How do they identify these special interest groups? How do they address them? So this was uh, a very good uh, place where we said, okay, Populations that require to have a voice, we can identify them and we can bring them on the table and be part of the change. And the discussions were quite rich because the different countries and different partners were able to bring out what is it that it means not to leave anyone behind. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Good note to end on. Thank you both, Adriana and Simon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's very, very good.